What do you see as the challenges incumbent workers face in accessing higher education? And if you have thoughts on how to address these challenges, please share them. Uh, well, thanks. Thanks for the and thanks, Dan, for inviting me. I really appreciate it. Uh, it, it. There's a rare opportunity as a newcomer to an area to be a big man. I'm going to keep doing that as long as I can. From what I understand, I get about one generation. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the fortunate thing about, uh, about my position is that there are some really great uh, center directors that have been working in the area for quite a long time. Uh, Dennis is one, uh, Derek Meehan is another, the uh, community college patient. Uh, and then throughout the left bit of, uh, of Maine, there are six other people, one actually takes care of two uh, And so I really depend on people there to let me know about what the actually is about, not the information that they're about. Uh, so uh, as far as incumbent workers, there's, there are some amazing changes that are happening in higher education. And those amazing changes are uh, creating uh, permeability to the wall that normally surrounds the university. So that people don't go to a university to prepare for work, but they go to a university as they are working to increase what they're doing and increase their skills. That means that the general trend is to incorporate more possibilities to become the workers in the university. And so I would say that the future is very bright for the campuses to be uh, attempting to do that. Now, now we know that um, the trend towards greater permeability is uh, it's rather new. Uh, you know, there's, there's a history of higher education that is it, it, sort of dusty. You know, it would be easy to recognize what a university looks like if you were, you know, 500 years ago and one and here and one now. Uh, but that is rapidly changing, and ra the rapid change is because uh, people that are currently in the workforce need to be able to do things outside that. Uh, and they need to be able to and I think how are they going to do that? Well, th those are the, the redesign of the way both programs, certificates, uh, and courses operate so that they're much more flexible to people to take part, uh, meaning that they can happen uh, asynchronously, in other words, people can go on their own schedules. Uh, there can be pace cohorts, the groups of people that uh, progress through a course of program together. Uh, and there can be a, a number of ways that people uh, access uh, this education. That can allow us to add classical ways that they can, or just, just time shifting ways that they can. Uh, the way you expect is that's going to be And uh, uh, the university wants to uh, encourage people to do that, they have to listen to employers. You have to listen to the, the people that are working with these workers to find out really what the demands and needs are. So I would suggest that we're going to see in the very near future a lot more industry panels that are talking to uh, university program developers saying, we want our workers to be able to do X. And so why don't you create a program that's going to figure out how we can do that? Instead of uh, the university saying, here's the body and purpose of college so that this is the world. Everyone should have this, take it and go forth and do something. Well, uh, you know, there's that, that kind of disconnect which we've often seen, and I expect that's going to be going on. Uh, so we look for the opportunities to uh, be on some of those panels and to advise program development. Councilor Keith. Um, I think we follow the same uh, thought. Um, so we're in an interesting period in uh, the United States and uh, Maine. And that, uh, if you look at uh, the recession uh, hit us and uh, unemployment uh, increase, that to the extent that uh, the nation has gone down economically, there's actually more unemployed people than there should be. And I think what has gone on is that uh, industry, businesses, uh, taking the opportunity of uh, this recession to change their workforce. So you have a situation in which uh, the speech of president of a company and uh, pretty much the uh, uh, broad sector or spectrum of this conversation is that so the uh, employees now say uh, like one and 
why uh, here appeals to see what thirty of them went to the main technical college. They are hard working and loyal. Mm -hmm. That is not the work for I need. I need loyal, hard working and critical thinking. Because essentially for the state of Maine to compete in the world and in the United States is we have to be innovative. So the moment that we develop a product or a way of doing things, take the other countries, China, India, three years and they'll pick it up. And the only thing that we have really is the innovation moving forward very quickly and for that you need a workforce that participates in that the creation. <laughs> if you look at the traditional way that we handle things, it doesn't work for people for them. Sometimes I wonder if it works for the young people. <laughs> but the one thing that is going on is that intuitively the people have made the work and, uh, know that there is a change. That's how you say, how come there's this increase in enrollment at the community college for uh, us is uh, the, uh, we have the space that we're turning away people from 2,000 a year. It's that people know there's a change in the airport. Um, a couple of uh, disconnects that we have. One major disconnect is the, the school, K-12, and their vision as to what are the graduation outcomes. And then higher ed, at the other hand, has an expectation of what the income should be. It has to be different. And we have to have a conversation among all of us uh, that connects that. Where that conversation takes place or actually works, where it doesn't take place, then you do have a disconnect. That has a big impact on the student as to the cost of education and how long it takes them to leave with a degree. They are able to do that. The other situation is the adults. And there is a bright spot there if you look at it. In the state of Maine, there are around 400 adults working that have some college. And if we're going to increase the number of people who have college degree, and we have to do that, and that's the low food, and getting food. And we have to develop a way to, you know, of getting to them. Okay. And that way, we have to think differently. We just cannot continue with, uh, so this is the way we work, and you have to adjust. Uh, the industries that, uh, that are coming to the medical and uh, are going to be high end. You know, the base is open, it has a lot of opportunities there. Uh, we are seeing that uh, an aircraft company is coming in. We have been speaking to several other companies. And what they want is a very well educated uh, workforce that is able to handle uh, pretty much advanced uh, Material and what to do, how to do it. Um, and the only way that we're going to provide that work with that is by working with adults. And having distance learning, uh, having hybrid courses, which is part going to class and part distance, uh, weekend colleges, uh, evening, fast track. Um, right now, the adults. It just takes them too long, and a lot of them get discouraged, and we have to cut them. Um, if we don't do these things, uh, we will be in trouble uh, of the competition in the world in the United States.